everyone, welcome to the Polka Dot Life. My name is Sally and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the United States. Today I am dipping my toe into some of the Christmas products. I know it's still blazing hot in a lot of places here in the United States, but our Christmas products are just so off the charts this year, I couldn't wait to play with just a few of them. Today's card is one that I thought might be really nice for a shut-in, someone in a nursing home or hospital, or even if you are traveling for the holiday, something that you could take with you just to have a little Christmas wherever you are. Let's flip the camera down and get started on today's project. We are going to be making what is known as a swing card today. And we are primarily going to be working with the sweet stocking suite of products. We are going to pull just a few other things in here and there. There's a lot of little details in this card. This is probably what I would consider more of an avid crafter card, but you certainly don't need to shy away from it if you are a beginner. It just takes some time and a lot of little steps. There are a nice variety of dies in this set. I used the stocking ones today, and then I also used some other dies. I have a piece of Mossy Meadow cardstock, and I know it isn't one of the suggested colors, but when you look at the paper, you can definitely see it in there, and I thought that it was a good color to kind of use as a grounding color for everything else. We are going to use the eight and a half side it's, since it's already measured for us. And then we are going to cut this at five and a half. So it starts out like a regular card base. Even this next side, we are going to score it at four and a quarter. Move this cutting blade out of the way and we're going to score it here. We're going to leave our card open and we're going to turn it this way. And we're going to find where the one and a quarter is. Now, see, we have nice measurements on our tools that we can even see here in the center that this is one and a quarter. And you really probably on camera can't see, but I'm kind of going to place my finger there where that score line is. I'll even do it right there. So I have my finger here, but I can't even really with my lighting, can't see it that great. So I am going to turn this and I'm just gonna take a little look. And if I need to move this on my tool, I can do that as long as I stay with that one and a quarter mark. I can even hold this right here so that I know that I have lined up this crease with that line. Just want to make sure it doesn't scoot around at it on you. And so we can hold this down nice and I am just going to come up on that one and a half mark and you can see right where that's going to be. I would rather you go too short than too long, but I can see that I still have a little bit further to go where that is lined up there. But again, I would rather you go too short than too long. I'm gonna turn it around. I'm gonna come back to the one and a quarter mark and you can develop your own system. This is just my way of being able to see this well. It might not be my first choice, but you know what? When you get a little older and your eyes don't work so well, you kind of have to modify things. So I just have to remember I'm cutting this way this time. You, you can make yours work however it works for you to cut it, but I just know that I am going this direction this time. And then see there we have our parts to our swing card. We're going to do like we always do. We're gonna gather that bottom so that it is even, and then we're gonna give it a nice fold. 
So if your cuts didn't go clear to the top, we do need to do this first. First off, I want you to look, and if you need to make a little tiny snip to get that up to the line, I want you to do that now. And then this next step you wouldn't need to do, I chose to do it. I'm folding those two small side flaps in and I'm just gonna cut like an eighth of an inch off. I want my card to kind of be able to stand up well. And sometimes if you don't do this, it, it hangs up on your surface. So when we're done, this is going to be like this. And after giving that a little try, I think that in total, if I would have taken a quarter inch off, it would have been better. So I am just going to take off another eighth of an inch. There are a lot of judgment calls in this card, and that is one of them. So now the fun part is decorating your card. I started out with a piece of cherry cobbler cardstock, and I will have all the measurements for you over on my blog. You're going to have to do that this time. There are just so many different measurements. But I started out with taking a full card front size sheet of this. I took my brick and mortar folder and I opened it up and I took my white craft ink pad and I slid it on this. You will see on my other example, my original card, I used cherry cobbler. And I did that one with, I embossed it first and then I used a sponge jobber, went over it. So there are a lot of different options. You can customize it to your color brick on your fireplace, whatever you would like to do. But I wanted you to see this too, because you'll see after the measurements, like we cut that portion off here so that the portion of that flap is a little bit shorter. And I'm gonna start by adhering our brick onto our fireplace front. You wanna use liquid glue or something strong, seal plus, tear and tape, just because this is an embossed layer, this is a card that's going to get a lot of movement. You don't want things gushing around, but you do want an appropriate amount of adhesive. And you just kind of want to center this up on the flap. And there's a little tiny bit of an edge, but not much. Just enough so it isn't impeding this movement. Don't, don't glue things down yet. We're just going to lay our pieces here. So you can position your pieces however you would like them to be. I like mine like that. But before we glue that down, I ended up cutting these pieces down just a little bit, but I will have the correct measurements on my blog. I just decided they were a little bit too long. And so we are just gonna simply center these in this part, but we don't wanna do that yet. Okay, so we have this window sheet and it's just gonna be there for some stability is what that is going to be there for. And so you just kind of wanna bring it in enough that this tape isn't going to show. This is such a great adhesive. If you don't have this in your craft room, you really need to add it. Um, when it comes to things like window sheets or things that aren't paper sometimes or something that's gonna have a lot of wear and tear, this is going to be your friend. Let's release this adhesive paper. This is just, like I say, it's a lot of steps. It's just kind of like building a sandwich. And then at the end, you get to put all the toppings on that you want once you get this base put on here. And here's how I would suggest you put this on. Let's just lay this on here and line it up. You might just run your fingernail there and hold this center, making sure this isn't sneaking out over the edge on you. And then just fold these flaps down. And then that's nice and secure. It's just hard to see, but it is a necessary thing. Just gives it some strength. We're gonna add our glue now. And 
can just simply, there's not a lot of margin. And sometimes they aren't exactly the same all the way around. You just kind of want to make sure the ones at the bottom are uniform between the two layers. If that's something you want to look at, your eye's going to go there first. And just lift these up just to double check yourself to make sure nothing's catching on that hinge whenever you fold it. Just make sure you have a little time to slide that down if you need to. Okay, for this portion, we are going to build the mantle on our fireplace. I brought in some of the pieces from the Inga Taste paper pack. You know, some people call it the Home Depot pack. There's wood, there's tile, there's brick. There's something that surely maybe looks like your home. And so I cut two strips and I lay them side by side in this 3D embossing folder. And I ran them through to give them just a little texture and then I glued them together. You can just pick whichever side you like. You're going to see it from the back, just so you know that. I am just gonna kind of line mine up here. If you need to use your grid paper, again, you could do that to line it up to be just perfect. I'm kind of okay with eyeballing it. The great thing about adding something with dimensionals is you can kind of snip them off with a pair of scissors if they really get dried and they're in the wrong place. So we have our backings all off. Do not put backings anywhere else in here because you're going to see it on the other side. And you'll just notice there might be little different frays or things from cutting your paper. You may just have to do a little haircut here and there or blend something down with your finger, something like that. I am going to put glue on this so that I can kind of move it around. I'm just going to bring this down enough for me to see it. I'm going to line mine up with that. Mine just happens to kind of work on that line of bricks. I don't want it down too far because we're going to be hanging things from it. So you don't want it clear at the top. You want some of this to show but you don't want it down too far. So now we have this step completed. Now we're gonna decorate a little bit. And I'm gonna change mine up a little tiny bit from how I did it in the first one. I think you just have to experiment, see what works, what you like, what you don't like. Um, these stockings, like I say, are straight out of the designer series paper. If you don't have a die cutting machine, you can fussy cut these out. They are not difficult to do that at all. And I'm just laying there for these there for the spacing. You just kind of want to put the glue at the top. If you want to put a little bit there, you can. These are going to get glued directly down. And I'm going to put mine about there. Again, you can just guess and space yours how you like. You may wanna do this step at the end after we get everything else put together. Um, it, you'll just have to watch this video through, see how things turn out. And then, like I say, if you wanna do yours a little bit differently, that is fine. Take something, make it your own. When a demonstrator says, you do you, that's what they mean. So we have our three stockings um, and you could change the amount of stockings, whatever works for your family, you could do that. I am even going to change the front of my card a little bit. I am gonna add a little panel in here that I just cut a strip of paper and I used one of our punches that you know, you can cut something any length you want and then put the different decorative edge on it. Now see, I can see that this paper has something in the fiber that bothers me. So I'm just gonna turn that around. And I'm just going to arrange these where I want them, kind of in the um, middle of this area, 
maybe down a little bit further toward the bottom. You just eyeball it, see what you'd like. I think I do like that. I'll just remove them one at a time so that I can use the other one as a gauge as to where I want them to go. And you just wanna be careful not to get glue all over something that you don't want it on. So I think I like that. I'm gonna worry more about this edge being straight. I'm gonna do the same thing on this other side. Scoot that in underneath. I'm going to leave about the same margin on this side. I am going to pick this up just to kind of look. You could even, if you didn't have grid paper or, you know, sometimes with these, it's even hard to see. If you do have grid paper, you may just want to kind of look and see. Maybe this one needs to come down just a hair further it's another thing why I like to use liquid glue it just gives you some nice wiggle room and I think that looks pretty good if by chance you get this finished and it dries and it's a little off we'll be able to fix that with some decorating so we're going to flip to this layer and I actually think this might be my favorite layer from the painted Christmas suite of products I used this die I wanted to make a opening for my fireplace so I cut out a piece of basic black cardstock with this die I'm gonna bring in my trimmer and I want to cut this fireplace piece down to Let's start with an inch and three-fourths. I would say we'll be safe for most of you. I want to cut it a little on the larger side and have you be able to trim it down. We're going to just lay this here so that it lines up with the bottom of that red piece, not the green. And see, it comes up into my stockings a little bit. So I want to cut, I'm going to make it, I think, an inch and a half. And just line that flat side up. And I think this is going to be perfect. Yes, that's going to work well. I'm not going to glue this down just yet. We have a little bit more of some little delicate work to do. I'm gonna bring in my silicone craft sheet. We are going to make fire in our fireplace. I'm picking the side down that has the smoother edges on the front. I used this die. It's just like the branches or stem from our Harvest Meadow suite of products, those dies, and I cut two of those out of some of that same wood that we used for our mantle. The sheet I chose was a little variegated, so I have some dark and light. Yours might look different, but I thought that might be kind of a nice, fun touch. I am simply gonna rip off some of these sticks. You can use as many or as few as you would like. I kind of like to work in threes and some of them you'll just have to make a little smaller. You just have to see what works for now. Let's just kind of go with this little shape. This is a very unscientific method here. I grabbed out of my sash, I have the flowers and leaves and I have the Strawberry Builder Punch. I actually think if you have the Strawberry Punch, it works well, but just you want something with a lot of edges. Um, I like this one because it's kind of more ragged. 
this is how my other card, this is how I left that. This is some bumblebee. And I am just gonna start and cut out some pieces. But you could just go through what you have and find something with an edge. It doesn't have to be this shape. Um, in fact, I kind of like lining it up to where it just cut some ragged pieces and just let them fall on your work surface. Just give yourself a variety of things. Um, I could even, now that would be kind of large, but I could, you know, take some off here and it would create a little edge there to work with. Um, I just think these kind of look like flames, but like I say, work with what you have. It's nothing scientific. We are just making some edges and we're even using the torn sides that we have. And let's see what we can do with this. I do kind of like this piece, but I'm going to tear it in half. I'm not gonna use it quite just like that. I probably should have cut that with my scissors. I think what I want to do, I think I do wanna go ahead and let's build our stick base first, and then we can kind of tuck in around it. I wanna slide it down off of this black piece and I'm just going to take this silicone craft sheet. This is such a great thing. And I'm just gonna put a piece of that glue there. And we can kind of work right underneath this area so that we get our sizing right. Okay, I'm gonna take my stem. I'm just gonna drag it through that area and I'm gonna stick it right to my mat. And I know that I want it about you know, we wouldn't want it going off the side of that. And then let's, I think it does help to build the bottom two and then put that center one on. I've kind of found that to be true. And even though it doesn't line up properly here on this, it will, once we move it up to our card, we can control that. And we can even decide if we needed to add a few more pieces or that kind of thing. And we may end up cutting some of that length off. So I'm even going to do this this way. Then we can start and layer in some of these pieces. If you had some tweezers you'd like to work with, sometimes those are helpful. I kind of get the end of my tick, take your pick tool down in there and pick it up just a little bit. And like I say, we can trim the bottom off nicely. So it's just, we're just using this as a work surface. I like this piece right here. You can even push things in and around these sticks. We're just building things up here at this point. And it really doesn't take but just a few pieces anyway. Like I say, the, the strawberry punch one does just make a nice shape, but if, and I, I don't necessarily want it to look like a flower. So if I tuck it in back behind another piece, then I'd lose that part that makes it look like a flower. And so if I like it like that, but maybe I want to add another just little bit of stick. I might just leave this tail long to work in here. I'm just going to put that right over the top and it can just kind of be a little longer I like that oh, 
We can come back later. Um, if you wanted to just leave this and come back to it, we could do that. In fact, that's what I think I'll do. I'm gonna clean up some of my scraps and I am just going to move this to the side. So again, building layers, building layers, building layers. So we will be putting that there. And then this is going to go up here, but let's go to the inside. You can choose to have layers here. You can choose not to have layers here. So whatever you think is good, I am going to go ahead and put a matte layer underneath this so that it makes it the same width as this. Okay, let's put these layers together. And I guess since we have this matte out already, we might as well bring it in and keep my surface as clean as I can. You could use either side, whatever you like for your decor, for your Christmas, what colors you like to use. I like this suite, this DSP, because it kind of has, you can do some traditional things and then you can use some, that pool party is a little bit non-traditional. You could kind of go with like a beachy feel that would be fun. Okay, now that we've moved this out of the way for a little bit, this is still a little bit tacky, so we're gonna just let that dry. And I have these pieces here that are going to go on this white inside layer of our card. I want you to see where this is, but I don't want to glue these down just yet, and you'll see why. We're going to use our Stamparatus for this greeting. It is a straighty straight one. And I don't like doing those very well, especially on camera, but I love the look of them. So we just kind of want to sit that on there for one minute so we know where to line that up. See what I'm saying? There's not a lot of room for error. So you want to get your Stamparatus set up if this is the greeting and this is the placement that you want to use. I'm going to line mine up here. I have mine set up to push up against this edge. And three squares over. On my last card, I used Cherry Cobbler and it stained my stamp, which you can see. And I probably didn't even get this off here real well. I need to wipe that off really well when I'm done. But it stained my photopolymer stamp. With If you use red or a really dark color, um, it can stain your stamp. That does not mean it's damaged. It just needs wiped off with your stamp and chamois or however you clean your stamp and it will be ready to go in another color even though it still looks pink. Today I am going to stamp pool party. I decided to bring in a little bit of that pool party for this card. If you have your little um, ink spots from your paper pumpkin, those are great. I'm gonna take a minute I'm going to wipe that off and then I'm going to bring that down. I just don't want to take a chance of ruining that piece of white cardstock. I am going to go over that again. Cute. Be real careful. I'll use some hand sanitizer on my hands. Put my ink pad away. Let's bring this in. And I'm just going to line that right on up there. I'm going to do the same thing on our other side. And I know this is a little longer of a video it's just there are some more detailed things that have to be done in an order in which you kind of have to do them. So um, I apologize. You can simply fast forward through any part that you don't need to see. And let's bring this in. And now you're not going to center it in this portion. We are going to line up these sides and this side. And this is going to be a little bit bigger of a border. So let's just kind of check our placement. We want this to come down. And then let's 
see how, you know, you won't see any of that through, but you're gonna, as you go, your recipient goes through opening it, then you're going to see this. So that is what we want. And let's put this into place again. Kind of lining up those three sides, not worrying so much about that bottom one. I mean, of course you would want it to be straight, but as far as the spacing goes, it's going to be a little bit different. And let's again, just do a little quick check while our glue lets us work. And there, we have this right here. I want to add this little kitty cat friend. It looks like that cat that's always in a bad mood. I again, just fussy cut that out of the designer series paper. You could stamp in any images. I would just do any stamping before you glue anything down on this white layer. You don't want anything to go over just because you kind of don't want it to show through from this side. So let's bring our black part of our fireplace back in. And just kind of see where we want that to be. You're gonna to wanna to extend it down past. You don't want any of this glue to show, so it's mostly going to be catching the parts that are sticking out. If you feel that you need to go in later, you can always add a glue dot or something like that if you need to secure a certain twig or branch better. And it is a little bit hard to see and it can get a little bit messy but you know we're okay with that and again we can always add two a little bit more it's you just can't really take it away except for this bottom edge and until you hold it on your card also it can be a little bit hard to tell how you want things. I am just gonna rub a little of that sticky off. It's still remaining. I just don't want it to get on my window sheet a lot. And I didn't bring my gum eraser over, but I'll go back through and get it when we're finished. We'll just, I will take it directly to my desk, my other desk, and that's what we'll deal with there. And I, again, would suggest the liquid glue here because you are working on this embossed layer. And let's just put it down. Let's just lay it there first. And isn't this kind of cute? Because then our window sheet is our little protector screen for our fire as well. I thought that was a little bit funny that it kind of worked out that way. My engineering husband like that idea. So we're just gonna bring this in, kind of match up even on those sides, even with the red, not the green. Now it can slide down past a little bit just so you don't want that red showing, but you do want this to be straight. So again, this card is coming together super cute the last thing I need to add are some bows on my stocking and I decided like I said I wanted to bring in a little bit of that pool party color and we're just gonna add this pretty ribbon that goes with that suite right in the front let's make sure your bows are all adjusted before you want to put them on your card. They're much easier to adjust when they're not on your card. 
But the great thing with a glue dot too is you have a little bit of that time that you can work with it. You can pull it off if you need to. Just take that ribbon and push it right into that glue dot. And this one I'm gonna just bring over a little bit because I don't want that hanging off the edge of that card. Let's just give this a little trim. It's got a little loose thread on the bottom. But there, isn't that cute? I love it. So we have this one, and then this is the original one that I did, so you can kind of see some differences. I did not put this panel on my first card. I added a little, instead of, I cut a shorter or a less wide strip of the wood here, and I put white behind the first layer before I glued the two of them together, just so it had like a little trim board there. I used a more natural ribbon. I did a double bow there. And then our fireplaces are a little bit different too. Um, like I say, I used the white on here to kind of give it that whitewashy effect that a lot of brick has. And, and no two fires are going to look the same. And then I just used a different cat and I used the cherry cobbler on this one. Um, I decided I liked this print for the sides the best. The other things just kind of fought. So you go ahead and decide what works for you. Try a different designer series paper, whatever you want to do. But I thought that they both turned out really, really nice. And as I said at the beginning, it's great. And I can't really show you this way. It, it's not going to show very well. because I'm going to have to let me tip it because it's gonna go this way to sit. This would be a great card for someone to sit on a dresser or a table or something that they could look at and enjoy it. Many of our elderly people don't have the energy or resources to decorate for Christmas, but they still have those memories of their childhood or having their families, and they love just thinking about it. And so this would be something really that could be a blessing to someone just to give them a sweet Christmas memory. As always, remember to be kind, send a card, and do something creative. Bye-bye.